Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly, and this is the Talking Points Memo. 17 years ago today, 9-11, more than 3,000 innocent civilians killed, the nation in turmoil, but we came together. We came together. I'm broadcasting this from Long Island, and this morning there was a very emotional service in my town where scores of people were killed because folks who live here commute into the city, into the financial area, and many worked in the World Trade Center also. Police, firefighters, public officials live on Long Island, and they were injured and killed as well. But I was struck because I remember that day I was in my house and uh, I was watching the uh, news, getting ready to come in for the O'Reilly Factor on Fox, and um, I would, my head snapped back because they cut to uh, the carnage, the World Trade Center, the, the first plane that crashed. And immediately my producer called me and said, you know, it was a disaster. We all thought it was an accident. And then, of course, the second plane, and we knew it was terrorism. And from there, um, we broadcast uh, that night from Long Island. They sealed the city off. But I was, everybody was just stunned. It was, how could this happen to us? How could this happen in the United States? And in the weeks afterward, uh, people rallied around President Bush the Younger. Uh, we did what we had to do. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. Um, but it was uh, a united front. Now, 17 years later, this country has never been more divided except for the Civil War. Ever. How did that happen? So the reason is that the rise of the devices, these, and the proliferation of 24-7 news on television has led to an amazing amount of propaganda on both sides, on the left and the right, and a plethora of hate. That if you don't agree with me, I hate you, I want to hurt you, I will hurt you, I'll uh, get money to hurt you, I'll do whatever it is. That happened kind of slowly. It started with the Iraq War, where a segment of Americans didn't buy into the invasion of Iraq by American forces. Um, that's where it started. And then the progressive movement took on power, and the conservative traditional movement resented the intrusion and the change that the progressives wanted. So we came off eight years of President Bush the Younger, who, uh, for whatever reason, did not keep track of the economy, and it fell over a cliff. Then the most progressive president in history was elected, Barack Obama, because Americans were rightly concerned about their livelihoods. How could this happen on a Republican president's watch? How could the economy be so damaged? We'll give the new guy a chance. The new guy is very articulate. But the new guy, instead of getting down to fixing the economy and uniting the nation again, did not do that. He bought into a progressive agenda and wanted to redistribute income and wanted to punish affluent Americans and corporations, which he did by regulations and higher taxes. So the economy didn't recover very well, slowest economic recovery in history. That led to Donald Trump, directly to Donald Trump, who came in and said, you know, this is wrong, you're getting hosed, uh, I'm going to fix it because I'm going to impose robust capitalism, which he has. And the economy is fixed for the time being. But in the meantime, the forces who supported Barack Obama and progressives and the forces who support Donald Trump and the traditionalists, bang. And we are caught in the middle. We, the American people, are caught in the middle. Adding to that was the media, or is the media, that threw in with the progressives very early on and drives home the narrative that PC is good for the country, change is good, America is not a noble nation, higher taxes, quasi-socialism, all of that's good. 
And on the other side, people seethe with anger. Seethe. And that's why 17 years after the attack on 9-11, we have an amazingly divided country. And that is the Talking Points Memo. I'm Bill O'Reilly for Newsmax reminding you that we do honest and very smart analysis every night on BillOReilly.com. And my upcoming book, Killing the SS, The Hunt for the Worst War Criminals on Earth, will be out October 9th. We hope you pre-order it. This book will stun you. It's about evil, and there's plenty of evil in play in the USA. We'll see you soon.